We begin this week with team coverage on the newest information on youth smoking nationally and here in Oklahoma. According to the just released 2023 National Youth Tobacco Survey, more than half a million fewer middle school and high school teens are smoking and vaping than in 2022. However, the Oklahoma ABLE Commission says illegal vaping is way up among minors in our state. We have two reports for you, beginning with details in the study just released by the Food and Drug Administration. We're joined by Dr. Brian King, who's the FDA Director for the Center for Tobacco Products. Dr. King, thank you for your time. First of all, the report is out. Give us one or two takeaways from your perspective. I will say that we've had considerable progress over the past year. Um, we've got some good news in terms of reducing e-cigarette use among U.S. high school students. Um, we saw a decline from about 14% to 10% over the past year, which is a monumental public health win. Um, but on balance, we did see a slight uptick among middle school students uh, in terms of use of any tobacco product. Dr. King, what about Oklahoma? I know uh, we have fewer young smokers here as well. We do not have data from Oklahoma from this particular survey, which is a national survey, but there are other surveys that have assessed um, data from Oklahoma. And so from 2021, um, we did see cigarette use among Oklahoma youth was about 4%, um, but e-cigarette use among Oklahoma high school students was higher, about 22%. And we have seen considerable progress in reducing combustible cigarette use uh, among kids over the past um, uh, two or three decades, um, but we can't rest on our laurels. And it's important to be mindful of the variety of products that the kids are using. So doctor, do you pursue both e-cigarettes and regular tobacco usage? Do you combat them, trying to reduce them in the same ways or in different ways? When it comes to addressing tobacco product use, FDA addresses the diversity of products. So that includes smoked products like cigarettes and cigars, um, also e-cigarettes and other smokeless products um, like chew and, and dip and, and snuff. Um, and ultimately, we have the authority to regulate um, all of those products. And so e-cigarettes have been the most commonly used tobacco product among kids since 2014. Um, but we do want to make sure we're not playing a game of public health whack-a-mole where we're allowing some products to go up and others to go down among kids. We really want to make sure our education efforts, but also our enforcement and compliance activities address the diversity of products that kids are using. So the obvious question is, why are we seeing this reduction? Who gets the credit for that? At the federal level, um, FDA has been pelting the marketplace with enforcement and compliance actions over the past year. Um, we've issued a variety of warning letters to e-cigarette manufacturers, also the first civil money penalties, as well as injunctions and coordinating with, with the Department of Justice um, against illegal e-cigarette products. And just this past summer, we had a series of blitzes um, uh, where we investigated retailers um, and issued warning letters and also civil money penalties against those who are selling illegal e-cigarettes, um, particularly Elf Bar, um, which was the most commonly used product among kids. Dr. King, what about advertising? What can you do about these advertisers who clearly are targeting their advertising message to younger smokers? The advertising will lead a horse to water, the flavors get them to drink, and the nicotine keeps them coming back for more. Um, that's the trifecta of factors that are driving youth use of these products. That said, we have only authorized 23 e-cigarettes. And so if a product is not on that list, it is on the market illegally, and FDA can take action. Let's talk about those risks for young people. We think of lung cancer, I guess, typically as, a, as something that the older smokers would get. What are the, what are the health risks for young kids? So when it comes to e-cigarettes, we know that as a general product class, they have markedly lower risk than a conventional cigarette, which you know has 7,000 chemicals and 70 carcinogens, but that doesn't mean there's no risk. And when it comes to kids, we're particularly concerned about the nicotine. We know that the vast majority of e-cigarettes contain nicotine, um, which is highly addictive. It can uh, also prime the brain for addiction to other drugs, but it also harms the developing adolescent brain, which continues to develop until about age 25. And the bottom line is we know that cigarette smoking harms nearly every organ of the body. Um, we still have about 480,000 Americans that die each year from smoking. Um, and tobacco use remains the leading cause of preventable disease and death in this country. And it's not just the health risks, it's also substantial financial costs. About $600 billion is spent in the United States each year to treat um, smoking-related illness. Wow, that's a lot of great information. Dr. Brian King, FDA Director for the Center for Tobacco Products, we thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure talking to you today.